Uh, today, inshallah, we are going to uh, complete uh, our uh, topic, the bleaching. Uh, this is the second lecture. Uh, we discussed before the causes of discoloration and uh, uh, bleaching agents. Uh, today, we are going to discuss the bleaching techniques uh, and the adverse effects of bleaching. Well, bleaching techniques uh, is classified into either internal bleaching or external bleaching. In case of internal bleaching, mainly the tooth is non-vital, but we have an endodontic treatment, so the bleaching agent is applied inside the access cavity. While in external bleaching, uh, the bleaching agent is applied over the external surface of the tooth. Internal bleaching is further classified into thermic, thermocatalytic, ultraviolet photo oxidation, or walking bleaching. We will the difference between them in External bleaching is further uh, classified into in-office bleaching and mouth guard bleaching. Regarding internal bleaching, as we said before, the uh, bleaching agent is applied uh, into the access cavity in the pulp chamber. And then uh, a heat source is uh, uh, applied uh, over uh, the tooth to activate the bleaching agent. Uh, it will result in uh, the production of uh, oxidizing molecules. This heat source uh, may be a heat lab, a flame instrument, a special device, electric device uh, made for this purpose. While in ultraviolet photo oxidation, the same concept, the uh, bleaching agent, which is mainly uh, hydrogen peroxide from 30 to 35% concentration, uh, will be placed inside the pulp chamber, but uh, the activation source will be an ultraviolet light for two minutes. Uh, it will release, uh, as we said, the oxygen or the oxidizing molecules responsible for the bleaching process as we discussed in our previous lecture. The walking bleaching. Actually, in the walking bleaching, uh, I uh, uh, apply the bleaching agent inside my uh, pulp chamber and I send the patient home with the bleaching material. That's why it's called the walking bleaching. أنا بحط حاجة inside the uh, access cavity وببعت العيان البيت وبعدين بيجي لي to assess the outcome and if I need further sessions. Before uh, making uh, the bleaching, I must analyze the cause of the discoloration uh, and how uh, I'm gonna uh, 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 deal with it. Is it a resistant discoloration, a deep discoloration? What's the outcome? I wanna get the anticipated outcome the possibility of restaining is the patient uh, willing to keep uh, uh, his uh, teeth uh, uh, bleached and, and, and in, a good in a good condition or is he going to uh, uh, restain his teeth with uh, smoking or whatever uh, drinking or uh, stain food I must assess all these uh, factors before starting the bleaching Actually, there are some stains that cannot be bleached, and there are some patients that are not compliant. You will work all the work you will do, you'll just. Uh, okay? Then I'm gonna assess the tooth itself by radiographic examination. I will examine uh, the periapical status of the tooth, the endodontic. Treatment. I will make sure that there is no epical pathosis. The endodontic treatment must be uh, very good. Any poor endodontic treatment must be retreated. That's to avoid the leakage of any bleaching agent to the periapical tissues. As we said before, our bleaching agents are very caustic. If it reaches the periapical tissues or the periodontal tissues, it will lead to severe inflammation. And this may lead to necrosis of the periodontal uh, ligament or uh, external uh, resorption of the root uh, and or the bone. Then I will determine the shade I need to get and I will isolate the tooth. Isolation in bleaching is of prime importance. It's very important to isolate the tooth very well. As we said before, our bleaching agents are very caustic 
and any contamination that will enter the tooth during the bleaching process will affect the outcome of my bleaching. After this, I must remove all the restorative material from the access cavity and somehow one millimeter inside the uh, root canal. As I shift all the restoration in the access cavity, and then one millimeter below the cemento enamel junction. That's to apply a barrier material. What's a barrier material? A barrier material is a material just like, say, glass enamel. I will put it in the floor of uh, uh, the tooth, and it will enter in one millimeter inside uh, uh, the root canal. Why do you apply a barrier material? Or why is it important? It's very, very important, actually. As we said before, our materials are caustic. If I left the tooth without a barrier material, the uh, bleaching uh, agents will uh, actually uh, leak into the uh, periodontal tissue through the dentinal tubules. As we all know, dentinal tubules are two-way passages. It will allow the bleaching materials to leak or to enter the periodontal uh, ligament uh, space, it will cause inflammation in the periodontal ligament with subsequent uh, uh, root resorption and actually many in the cervical area, we call it cervical, external cervical root resorption. Also, uh, if there is any stain in the tooth, it will affect your, uh, my outcome, especially uh, after metallic restoration such as uh, amalgam. Amalgam releases metallic ions that stain the tooth highly. So I may try to remove it with a small round burr, just uh, uh, one or two millimeters from the tooth. And then I may uh, 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 try to uh, open the dentinal tubules and get fresh uh, dentinal tubules by acid itching. I will acid itch the tooth, remove any smear layer and get fresh open dentinal tubules. Then I'm gonna mix my uh, uh, bleaching agent with water or anesthetic to obtain uh, the needed consistency, which is the sandy consistency, and we apply it inside the access cavity. I will remove all the excess material, especially those that uh, enter into pile corns or irregularities. I must remove all the excess material, and then I'm gonna close my uh, cavity with a three millimeter layer of a hard setting material such as uh, intermediate restorative material, glass enamel, whatever, I must make sure that my cavity is perfectly closed to uh, prevent first leakage of the material to the outside or leakage of saliva or irritants inside the tooth. This, pro this process will be uh, repeated uh, after one week uh, and for uh, three weeks. Uh, until I get uh, uh, the degree of, uh, of uh, bleaching I want to uh, get, the shade I want to get. هفضل أقررها من أسبوع اثنين ثلاثة على حسب الدجري أو اللون اللي أنا عايز أوصل له الشيد اللي أنا عايز أوصل The adverse effect of bleaching. The first one is the external resorption, as we said before, or the external cervical uh, 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 root resorption. This uh, uh, results from the heat, excessive heat, as in the thermocatalytic uh, type of uh, internal uh, bleaching, and the oxidizing agents that may diffuse through the dentinal tubules to the periodontal ligament. As we said before, these materials are toxic, and they cause inflammation of the periodontal ligament, the causes of cementum, with subsequent external root resorption. The second one is the coronal fracture. There is a debate between the scientists. Some say that uh, uh, bleaching causes an increase in the uh, brittleness of the teeth, while others say no bleaching is very safe, it doesn't cause any brittleness of the bleached teeth. However, for a tooth to be uh, bleached without uh, crowning, especially for anterior teeth for aesthetic reasons, uh, the tooth must uh, have a large amount of sound tooth structure. Uh, if there is not enough uh, amount of sound tooth structure, then the tooth should be covered or crowned. So, increasing a, a sound tooth structure amount 
will uh, also uh, increase its coronal fracture resistance. Chemical burns. Uh, again and again, our materials is uh, very caustic. So, uh, soft tissue protection is very, very, very important. How I'm gonna protect my soft tissue? By application of what is called a gingival barrier or gingy gel. Uh, it's a gel, it comes in a syringe, uh, it's injected uh, on the soft tissue around the tooth, and then it's light cured, it sets hard. This prevents the leakage of the uh, bleaching material over the soft tissue and prevent chemical burns and irritation of the soft tissue. Also, by using milder uh, types of uh, bleaching agent, but the bleaching agent is uh, always selecting, selected according to the bleaching technique, the degree of uh, uh, discoloration, and the outcome uh, I want to get. External bleaching, which is application of the bleaching agent on the external surface of the tooth. So it is applied on the enamel, and enamel, as we all know, is less permeable than dentine. So some scientists say that external bleaching is less predictable. It's not suitable for deep dentinal stains. It's better for surface coarse stains. Some stains are very resistant, resistant that it, uh, it may need both internal and external bleaching combined with each other. External bleaching is uh, classified into, uh, number one, the in-office technique. This is the in the office, in the clinic, and I start doing the bleaching. Mainly this type of bleaching, I use a high concentration hydrogen uh, uh, peroxide or superoxol from 30 to 35% directly onto the tooth surface. But before application of the bleaching agent, I must take all my uh, measures for the protection of the soft tissue. As we see in the uh, photos, uh, there is a cheek retractor or a rubber dam and then application of the gingy dam, the soft tissue retractor. There is always a suction uh, uh, connected to that device. Then I apply my bleaching agent on uh, the external tooth surface. Then I apply the activation source, which is uh, either a heat source, uh, uh, ultraviolet source, whatever the technique I'm gonna use. Uh, for the needed uh, or the required time for the session. This session may be repeated several times within the same uh, day, within the same session, or the patient may come later for another one or two sessions according to the shade I want to get.
Thank you very much and see you in next lectures inshallah.